Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about understanding that the universe is working for you 24 seven. The truth is the universe is constantly working for you, listening to your thoughts, actions, and words, and consequently creating your reality. We are constantly manifesting experiences into our lives, good or bad, based on what's going on in our minds. So what's the difference between someone that manifests the life of their dreams and someone who constantly keeps manifesting the opposite of what they want? It boils down to what they are constantly thinking about and speaking about daily. Words and thoughts have power. So in order to start manifesting great things, we must first work on developing an empowering mindset and speaking about only things that empower us and matches the life we want. After all, you can't manifest your dream job, house or dream partner while having disempowering thoughts that go against attracting what you want. By simply changing your thoughts to empowering beliefs like I can, I will and I am and believing and expecting great things to happen to you every day, our thoughts then become in sync with our reality, creating a life of limitless possibilities. As Sydney Banks quotes, your thoughts are like the artist's brush. They create a personal picture of the reality you live in. Stay tuned, coming up after the break. I wanna talk about the law of attraction. I wanna talk about The Secret. You, you star in the hit movie, The Secret. So for those of our viewers that don't know or not too familiar with what the law of attraction is, how would you explain it? In the simplest form, it's the basic understanding that what you focus on with thought and energy and emotion and repetition will tend to come into your life. And it's a, that's a very simple understanding because there's a lot of layers to understanding the law of attraction. For one, the law of attraction is working on your subconscious beliefs, not necessarily your conscious ones. I think that's a big mistake a lot of people think is that they, they say, well, I watched the movie The Secret. I saw Dr. Joe Vitale in the movie and Jack Canfield and John Asroff and the whole gang. And I decided that I was going to attract money. So I'm thinking I'm attracting money, but they don't look deeper. Wardrobe provided by H&M. Next up on the show, we have Dr. Joe Vitale, a renowned personal development expert and star of the blockbuster hit movie on the law of attraction, The Secret. Joe, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Look where I am. I'm finally getting interviewed by you. So you know it's a good day for me. <laughs> I am so excited to have you. I was just telling you that I watched The Secret when I was really small and that I'm such a big fan of yours. So it's really a pleasure and honor to have you on the show. Oh, but what everybody needs to hear is what you told me is that you manifested this show. You manifested a house. You mm -hmm. manifested several other things. Yeah. It wasn't that you just saw a movie called The Secret and you felt good. Yeah. You actually did something and created something. I did. I even have a vision board right across my bed that I look at every day. So I definitely practice this and that's why I wanted to have this episode to really show people because you know, there are skeptics and stuff like that. We're going to get more into the law of attraction a little bit later, but you know, everyone knows you as this motivational guru. You're helping millions of people live their best lives, but you know, things weren't always that easy for you. I know at a point of your life, you were homeless. So let, let's talk about that experience. What did it teach you? It, te it, it taught me not to be homeless. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's no fun. It's no party. Yes, way back in the late 1970s, I was homeless in Dallas, Texas. And I didn't have a car, didn't have a job, didn't have a relationship. I pretty much lived in the Dallas Public Library which on one level was great. You can see from the books behind me, I'm a book person. So to be in the library is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. But to be in the library as your home with nowhere else to go is not very cool. So I did a lot of self-reflection there because I knew I wanted to be an author. I was trying to be an author, but I was not getting anywhere. And so while I was in the library, I read all those existing self-improvement books, Think and Grow Rich, The Magic of Believing, Dale Carnegie, long list of success literature. I absorbed all of it. It was my opportunity to work on myself mm -hmm. and to find out what my beliefs were that was actually creating my experience. So once I discovered that, yeah, I was 
having very self-sabotage oriented beliefs that were creating homelessness and suffering. Once I discovered that and began to change it, then life began to change for me on the outside. It was not overnight because I was doing it by myself. We didn't have the internet. We didn't have coaching. We didn't have shows like this. Mm -hmm. So it was a one man show and it took quite a while to, to pull out of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and speaking of pulling out of it, of course, being in a situation like that is is extremely hard and extremely hard to get rid of um, because, you know, you have to change your beliefs. So when did you have that aha moment where you're like, enough, I'm, right. I'm going to change my life? What I discovered was profound, and I think this is what everybody needs to discover. There was an unconscious operating belief in my mind, and the belief said I had to suffer before I could be a success. And I got that belief because the authors I admired, Jack London and Ernest Hemingway, were very dramatic, adventurous, unhappy, and suicidal authors. Both of them ended by their own hand. A part of me, unconscious to me, decided, well, I have to suffer first too. I have to have a life like Jack London and Ernest Hemingway. When I woke up to the reality that, no, that is not a requirement, that I can find authors that are well-adjusted, that are happy, that are prolific, that are profitable, and I model my life after them, I would be better. And so finding that belief and changing that belief was the wake up that began to change and help me get out of homelessness and poverty. I feel like having a scarcity mentality is more common than having an abundance mentality. And so many of us have these thoughts sometimes that we're not good enough, that it can happen to other people, it won't happen to me. Um, so where do you think these limiting beliefs come from and how do we change them? Well, first of all, the limiting beliefs are everywhere. They're in the culture, they're in the religion, they're in the government, they're in the media. They are repeated and reinforced in movies, TV. We talk to each other in those terms. We talk about lack, limitation. We talk about struggle. This is the force of the universe right now because everybody keeps feeding it. We keep feeding the negativity. And as far as most of us know, and we're talking about lack and limitation and struggle, we all nod our heads because we all think this is the way it is. And that's what I thought when I was homeless and in poverty. But as you know, and I know, it does not have to be that way. There is abundance in the universe. And when you start to wake up, notice it, talk about it, and reinforce it, now the, the nature of the universe and the force of the universe goes in a new direction. Mm -hmm. What I tell people is we live in an optical illusion. Life is an optical illusion. You can see lack and limitation if you want, and you can see abundance and success if you want. Evidence for both of them are available. If you are sitting there going, well, this works for Joe and it works for her, but it doesn't work for me, you can go online and you can find proof. You can find studies. You can find people who believe just like you. There'll be books proving, yes, there's lack and limitation. Mm -hmm. And then one day you have an awakening, maybe today, and you look on the other side and you go, wait a minute, there's a lot of abundance in the world and I actually feel pretty prosperous and now I'm starting to see all these opportunities. You can go online and you will find books proving your point, mm -hmm. people who believe like you, groups who believe like you, and suddenly you'll see a whole different world. My point is, which one's real? Mm -hmm. Both are. Mm -hmm. You sitting here get a choice. You can continue to see the lack and limitation and you can lead your life that way. It won't be a very happy life. It'll be a life full of struggle and discouragement and unhappiness. Or you can wake up and start to see the abundance. When I was homeless, I didn't see the abundance. It didn't exist. Today, all I see is abundance. Mm -hmm. I'm the same guy. What's different? The optical illusion has been shifted and now I choose and do see abundance which is available to everybody watching. Yeah, and I agree with you with the news, media, there's so much negativity in the world and it's really easy to watch the news and feel sad. I know for me, anytime I feel like that, I have affirmations that I've written, um, not the cookie cutter ones, but ones that really work for me. And all I have to do is read them a few times and all of a yes. sudden, you know, I feel that sense of, uh, limitless possibility. So sometimes it's a little switch of when you feel like that, because we all do, and just kind of switching your mindset, you know? So I, I, I totally agree. agree. I remember having lunch with a person and I was telling her about affirmations. And she said, oh, I tried affirmations. They don't work for me. And I paused and I looked at her and I said, do you realize what you just said was an affirmation? Yeah. 
You just said affirmations don't work for me, which is an affirmation that affirmations don't work. Yeah. And because you feel they don't work for you, affirmations are actually working. Mm -hmm. This is why I'm, I say that people have to become acutely sensitive to their own thinking and their own speaking, their own way of being, because we are creating our own reality. When it doesn't seem like it, it's because we're unconscious to what we're thinking and saying. Much like the person at lunch, in her world, in her mind, she was 100% convinced affirmations don't work. But she didn't realize that the sentence, affirmations don't work, is an affirmation mm -hmm. and that's the kind of thing that i enjoy doing because i needed that kind of help along the way and people watching today might need that kind of help but it's available mm -hmm. it's a choice absolutely and life is really a projection of what's going on in your mind the days that you're happy you just notice things flow and when you're in a bad mood it reflects in your reality and that's what my the intro of my show today was all about so this is really synergistic that we're talking about this right now i want to talk about the law of attraction i want to talk about the secret you you start in the hit movie the secret so for those of our viewers that don't know or not too familiar with what the law of attraction is how would you explain it in the simplest form it's the basic understanding that what you focus on with thought and energy and emotion and repetition will tend to come into your life. And it's a, that's a very simple understanding because there's a lot of layers to understanding the law of attraction. For one, the law of attraction is working on your subconscious beliefs, not necessarily your conscious ones. I think that's a big mistake a lot of people think is that they, they say, well, I watched the movie The Secret. I saw Dr. Joe Vitale in the movie and Jack Canfield and John Asroff and the whole gang. And I decided that I was going to attract money. So I'm thinking I'm attracting money, but they don't look deeper because consciously you can say, oh, I'm attracting money, but the law of attraction is working on the subconscious mind. Mm. If in the subconscious mind you think money's bad or money's evil or money corrupts, or as you pointed out earlier, beliefs about themselves, they don't deserve money, they don't deserve good things, they don't deserve to have a happy life, those subconscious beliefs is what will be attracted. We will attract a match to what we are believing on a deeper level. That's why the law of attraction is so important, but it's also important to understand the deeper levels of it. Watching the movie is great. I love the movie, The Secret. I would endorse it whether I was in it or not. It introduced a principle that is needed in the world, which is one reason why it overtook the world. It came out in 2006. People are still watching it. They're still talking about it. I've been all over the planet because of that movie going on stages, telling people about the law of attraction. Mm -hmm. But I also say the movie's a movie. Yeah. It's not the be all and end all to understanding how to create your life. It's the beginning. It's an introduction to an idea, but you have to go further in order to be able to use it in a way that you can brag about. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And you know, so many people are skeptical of the law of attraction or manifesting. You use the word manifest or you use the word abundance or the universe and they're like, okay, this is not for me. This is meant for, you know, spiritual people. Um, so for those skeptics, what would you say to them? And as well, you know, how do we change those limiting beliefs? Because a lot of people don't believe in manifesting and they don't think it can happen for them. As you said, they think it can happen for you and, or me, but they don't feel like it's possible for themselves. And, and that's a you know subconscious belief. So how do we change those subconscious beliefs? Well, sometimes stories and examples make people start to wonder, maybe this will work for me. Mm -hmm. So the very first thing that I tell people is look at your own life. What you have in your life, you already created. When people say that visualization doesn't work and affirmation doesn't work, I'll say, do you ever worry? Do you ever lay awake at night and replay in your head all the things that could go wrong or all the things that did go wrong? You're actually practicing the principles of the law of attraction. You're using visualization, you're using affirmation, you're using repetition, you're using all the basic skills and you're using what we understand about how the brain works, but you're using it in your own disservice. What we want to begin to do is to apply it and direct it in the direction of what we want to create, not what we want to complain about. So here's one of my favorite stories. I went to Thailand a few years ago because of a young man who brought me there for a speaking engagement. He paid me lots of money to come to go on stage. And when I met him, I heard his story. 
He was 35 years old when I met him. 15 years before that, when he was 20 years old, he was in Thailand and homeless. He was broke. He was wiped out. He had inherited a little bit of money. He blew the money. He's sleeping on the beach. He is starving. He is desperate. He called a friend of his, and the friend said, I'm not going to send you any money, but I'll send you a book. And he sent him a copy of the book, The Secret. The movie, The Secret, came out in 2006. The book, The Secret, based on the movie, came out in 2007. So my homeless 20-year-old friend gets a book, and he's mad. He's furious. He's like, I'm starving. I don't want a book. Mm -hmm. I need help. I need a handout. And he starts to read the book, and he says, this stuff is garbage. He says, I am going to prove that this does not work. I'm going to prove that this does not work. So he's coming from an extreme skeptic, an extreme critic. And he begins to practice visualization. He's thinking, well, let me see if I can visualize a cup of coffee. Somebody buys him a cup of coffee. And he thinks, well, maybe that was a fluke. He says, let me see if I can manifest and attract lunch. Somebody buys him lunch. And he's thinking, well, that's just a coincidence. Then he says, let me see if I can get an apartment. Let me see if I can get a job. And he keeps upping the ante a little bit at a time. I'm here to tell you, 15 years later, when I met him, he's 35 years old. He's a billionaire. Wow. A billionaire. He is the largest real estate developer in Southern Thailand. More than that, he has 20 other businesses. More than that, he says he credits all of his success to me, Jack Canfield and Bob Proctor, three of the stars that stood out to him in the movie, The Secret. Mm -hmm. He was bringing me to Thailand to thank me. He actually kept me in Thailand for an extra week and put me up at a resort and wined and dined me and treated me like I was a king, all to say thank you. Wow. This was a man who was skeptical, critical, 20-year-old snot-nosed kid who is broke and homeless becomes a billionaire through 15 years. And he has, like I said, 20 other businesses. This stuff works. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And Dr. Joe, you've also manifested so much in your life. I mean, you went from homeless to this successful motivational guru and speaker. So I want to ask you, what is the biggest thing that you manifested in your life and how did you do it? Wow. I've manifested so many things. You're, you're making me stop <laughs> and reflect. I mean, I've manifested. I'm a musician. I manifested being a singer songwriter. I have 15 recorded albums. I've written songs that have been used in movies. I've written instrumentals that have been used as soundtracks in music. I have had three of my songs nominated for the Posse Award, which is the Grammys of positive music. And I'm saying all this because I'm kind of dazzled myself. Yeah. I've also manifested a car collection. The biggest one was a Rolls Royce Phantom, which is wow. a divine piece of machinery that is just indescribable. And, and you have to understand, for a guy who was homeless, who didn't have a car, to end up with a car collection and a Rolls Royce, and I typically derive Bentleys, which is just, you know, I don't think it's one down from a Rolls Royce. They're on the same luxurious level. And of course, I've, I've been in 20 movies. I've written 80 books. I have 200 products. I have a Miracles coaching program. I, oh my gosh, I'm, and I'm 68 years old and just getting started. So I've, I've uh, attracted a lot and I'm probably forgetting things that might be noteworthy to somebody else. Yeah. And not only have you attracted so much stuff in your life, you also have this wealth of knowledge. You've written over 75 books. I have one of the books right here, The Miracle, Six Steps to Enlightenment. So right. I, before we get into this book, I want to talk about, you know, where does this wealth of knowledge come from? Well, you know, the wealth of the, the wealth of knowledge in the world is easy to find. It's at your public library. Mm. It's at the bookstore. Any time I've ever wanted to learn anything in my life, whether it was learning to be a writer or learning to be a songwriter and learning to play guitar, learning I play the saxophone, I have a saxophone album, learning to play the saxophone. I've always gone to books first. I have always felt that the wisdom of the world and whatever category you want is in a book. And here's one of my secrets to success. I, le I read a lot of biographies because I learn from the blood, sweat, and tears, and the errors of those people who wrote their books, which saves me the blood, sweat, tears, the errors, the mistakes, the disappointments, the regrets. I learn 
what they did that worked and didn't work, and then I apply it in my own life. So the wisdom of the world, it's right behind me. It's right there yeah. in book form. Some of the greatest self-help material was written by Napoleon Hill, Thinking Grow Rich. He wrote a book called The Law of Success, which is an encyclopedia of the best self-improvement methods. But I don't care what it is. A few years ago, I got into strongman training, which is where you can bend horseshoes by hand, oh. metal by hand, and nails by hand. And I went crazy going into it. And I ended up writing a book called Anything is Possible, which talks about how to do these things. But I started with books. So for me, none of this wisdom is hiding. It's in the public library. It's in bookstores. It's at Amazon. It's available. Absolutely. And, you know, when I was going through a hard time after I graduated from college, it's funny because I would go to the personal development section in the library and I would get all these books and read them and read them. And every book gave me a different perception or, or just beliefs that I would I would learn. And it really did change my life. I think reading is so important. And for our, some of our viewers that don't like to read, you know what? There are podcasts out there. There's YouTube. There's so many things that you can do to get, you know, knowledge from all of the experts out there. Speaking of experts, I want to talk about the six steps to enlightenment. So what are they? Well, I took a whole book to write them. I don't think I remember all of them without <laughs> looking at the book. But I'll tell you, there's a couple things in there that most people have never talked about because they didn't know. And when I was reading Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, for example, I remember closing the book and going, okay, I read Think and Grow Rich. How come I'm not rich? And I know a lot of people read self-help books and they're wondering, well, I read Joe Vitale's book, The Attractor Factor, maybe The Miracle. And they're going, well, where's my change? Where's my miracle? And one of the steps in the book, The Miracle, explains it. So it's kind of like a, an illumination for people who've never heard this. I discovered that we have counter intentions in our being. What that means is we state intentions like I want to start my business. I'm going to find my soulmate. I'm going to have spiritual enlightenment. I'm going to attract more sales or more money. We have good intentions. Those are noble intentions. Those are positive intentions. I endorse those intentions. Mm -hmm. But as I pointed out earlier, if you have subconscious beliefs that are counter to your intentions, I call them counter intentions. They will stop you. Yeah. They will block you. And most of the time, you won't even know it. You'll just blame the world. You'll say, oh, I couldn't increase my sales because of the president or the economy or COVID or this or that, or I couldn't find the love of my life because all the good ones are taken. And you won't hear your own limiting beliefs. You'll say it as if it's reality. So one of the principles in the book is understanding the missing secret. And the missing secret is you must get clear of your limiting beliefs before you can have, do, or be your intention. Mm -hmm. That is, that's a million dollar takeaway for everybody viewing right now because I think that's my contribution to self-help. I think that's what's missing in a lot of the books, even from Napoleon Hill, who I worship. Mm -hmm. But I would say he didn't know this. Or if he did, he didn't tell anybody. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so knowing the missing secret, that's just one of the six steps in the new book, The Miracle. Yeah, absolutely. I have a friend who always talks about the things she's not good at. She said, oh, well, you're good in this, I'm not. Or you're good in that and I'm not. And I always tell her, if you think that way, it's going to be a reality. You know, instead of saying those words, say I can and I will and that anything is possible and changing your vocabulary. I think it's so important because people are constantly talking about what they're not good at or what they're not attracting and then they keep not attracting that. So I think that's, that's very true. It's a refocusing. I like that you point this out to your friend. You're being a good friend yeah. and you're being good to everybody that's watching this because you really are shining a light where people can grow and they can begin to change and they can do this far easier than they ever imagined before. They just need some support, some encouragement and some practice. Mm -hmm. But when people talk about what they can't do, that's the law of attraction at work. What are they focusing on? What they can't do? What do yeah. they end up getting more of? The reality of not being able to do something. Mm -hmm. All of us have different strengths. All of us have something we're really good at. And that's what we should be focusing on. So what if I can't bake a cake? 
You know, I can write a book. I won't sit around saying, boy, I can't bake a cake, so there's something wrong with me, or I wish I could, or I'm lacking in some way. It's like somebody else bakes the cake. I joyfully devour it. Mm -hmm. But my job is to write the books or record the music or appear in movies. Everybody has strengths. Find your strength, amplify your strength, share your strength. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, you know, we all have unique talents and gifts. All of us do, and I feel the more authentic you are and the more, more you try not to be anyone else but yourself, that's really when you get success. And even Oprah said that. She said, you know, if I knew being myself would make me this much money, I would have done it a long time ago, right? We all have different <laughs> strengths, right? And, and I, I really do believe the more you kind of step into who you really are and not compare yourself to others, that's really when the magic happens. So I, I completely agree with that. I wanna talk about the universe and God. Sometimes when I, I mention these things, it kind of puts people off because they're like, what does God have to do with the universe? So I wanna ask you, how would you explain the universe or God in reference to a higher power? What does that mean to you? I wanna carefully choose my words here because I wrestled with the same thing. You know, When I was homeless and people would talk about God, I was kind of mad at God. If there was a God, I would say, why would you put me in this situation? Why would you make me homeless? And it wasn't until a lot of self-reflection and inner work that I realized God had nothing to do with it. It was my choice. I was given God powers of free will, and I chose to go in a direction that ended up making me homeless, then ended up making me in poverty. But over time, new choices ended up creating this guy who lives the lifestyle of the rich and famous. I look at God as the universe, as the higher power, as the collection of the energy field of all that is. It is, as Deepak Chopra has called it, the field of all possibilities. Napoleon Hill, who I've referenced several times here, when I, I was filmed for a movie about him, and so I went and reread Think and Grow Rich, and I saw in the book that he referred to it as infinite intelligence infinite intelligence and I thought that's kind of a cool neutral way to look at it because I know when you say God or I say God a lot of people bring in their imagery and their expectations and what they were taught and that may or may not serve them I'm not taking any of that away I am saying the number one thing we all need to agree on is that there is something bigger more powerful more intelligent than us Mm -hmm. This is a big thing. In fact, it's one of the criticisms of the movie The Secret is that people would watch The Secret and then they would feel like their ego was bigger than the universe and that they can have what they wanted. And so it became very materialistic. Mm -hmm. And what I have learned ever since The Secret, and I've written about it in books like The Miracle, and I have a book called The Awakening Course. What I've learned is that you have more power than you ever imagined before, but you don't have all power. I often quote the Bill Murray line from the movie Groundhog Day, where he says in there, I'm God. But then he quickly says, I'm not the God, I'm a God. Mm -hmm. And I, I love the humorous distinction. It's like I, as Joe Vitale, have more power than I ever thought when I was homeless or in poverty. I can have, do, and be a tremendous amount, but I don't have all power. If I had all power, I would have ended COVID a long mm -hmm. time ago. Mm -hmm. If I had all power, my father died in the last couple of years, he'd still be alive. If I had all power, a lot of the things I and other people have wrestled with, I would have solved. I would have just said, well, let's just end that, snap my fingers. Mm -hmm. But I don't have all power. There is a force, call it nature, call it God, call it the divine, call it the great something that has the final say. Mm -hmm. So I give a more enlarged explanation without dismissing a higher power absolutely and it's also humbling knowing that you're yes. part of something uh bigger than yourself you know i mean if we all have the power to change everything i mean i mean what kind of life would it be it's, it's humbling to know that we're part of something bigger than ourselves um i want to talk about you know for some of our viewers out there that are going through a difficult time especially with covid and you know, the past two years have been pretty difficult for a lot of people. Um, so I wanna 
ask you, what advice would you have for someone that's kind of going through a difficult time, not able to manifest, is trying all the techniques, trying to change their mindset, but they're still not seeing those results and they wanna, you know, attract all those big things that we talked about, you know, having their dream car, dream partner, but it's just not happening. What would you tell them? What are the first steps that they should take to start seeing the results they want? Well, the very first step is to persistently watch your show <laughs> every episode because you're infusing them with hope and optimism. That's the first thing. The second thing is I want to tell people I relate to the struggle and I want to tell you being very transparent because I want to help people. The last two years or so were the worst of my life and I believe even more worse than homelessness. And how can it be more worse than homelessness? Well, I began a divorce that I thought would be over easily because I offered everything and it ended up being turned around and became a persecution of my my life and my business and it was excruciating and expensive and emotional and agonizing during the same two years of a divorce which is a world i don't know at all so a lot of darkness within those two years my father died my best friend died a family member attempted suicide I developed a new relationship with a woman who developed neuro Lyme disease and was pretty much on her deathbed during all the time I was on the divorce and I was her caretaker driving her to doctors and taking care of her during this time. And during this same time, COVID hits, which affects everybody differently. And in my case, wiped out my biggest income, which was from speaking and traveling around the world, like places like Thailand. And I had been to Iran and Russia and Ukraine right before it. And then it all comes to a screeching stop. And I'm saying all this to let people know, I know what it's like to struggle. I think there's a real social illusion out there when people see f social media or Facebook or Instagram and they see happy people and they look like they're partying and traveling and even they look at me that way. And they don't know that those are hand-picked moments. Yeah. We're sharing the joy and you don't see that the rest of the 24 hours could be pure hell, mm. which it was for me. So what did I do? Well, first of all, I know that if I surround myself with positive material, it'll help uplift me. So I always go back to books, which I ended, I mentioned earlier, but there's also a lot of audios. You mentioned podcasts. Most books are on audio these days anyway, so people can get it in that form. I'm also a big believer in watching movies because the visual helps you. Just uh, last night, I saw the 12 Mighty Orphans which brought tears to my eyes. It's a true story. It was so positive and you really get the feel. In fact, when you watch the movie, you think we are freaking lucky. Mm -hmm. We're going through COVID. We are lucky mm -hmm. compared to what other people have gone through, including the 12 orphans in that particular movie. So I watch the movies. The other thing that I do is I ask for help. I raise my hand when I say I can't get through this. I'm not afraid to go to counseling. I'm not afraid to get a mentor or a coach. And I also, because I had attorneys, I remember asking one of the attorneys for advice. I said, a divorce is new to me, but it's not new to you. I said, what is the best advice you've ever heard to get through this? And he paused and he gave the answer that helped me get through it. And this is the answer that can help everybody get through it. And that was focus on the future. Mm -hmm. Focus on what you wanna create. We can still create. The law of attraction is still alive, alive and around, just like the law of gravity is still operating. COVID didn't short circuit anything. It's still there. And in fact, I think in many ways, things happen faster and easier because we're doing them online. Mm -hmm. There was another pandemic 100 years ago in 1918. There was no internet. People had no idea what was going on. They're living in chaos. They're living in death and confusion and the grimness of not knowing. They don't have any communication at all. We're doing everything online. We're doing this online. We're not in the same place. So there's a lot that we can do. We can start a, a new business online. We can meet people online. All those times when people said, oh, if I only had the time to learn how to play, blah, 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 go to YouTube. Mm -hmm. Somebody's put up the videos and they're free. Google how to start your own business if that's what you want to do. So. All of the principles still apply. We just have to tap dance a little bit and kind of adjust to the moment. And the moment will pass, we'll get through this. But right now we have to learn new skills and learn to operate from the inside out. Yeah, absolutely. 
Joe, thank you for sharing that because I think that's really important too, is for people to see that, you know, just because someone's successful, just because they talk about the law of attraction and all these things, it doesn't mean that, you know, we don't have obstacles. And as you said, with social media, it's so easy to see people's highlight reels and all the right. great things and not really, and compare your life and saying, oh, wow, this person's life is so great, but yeah. they don't see the struggle. So I, I appreciate that you sharing that and that you went through that difficult period, but you focused on the future. And I think that's so important because there's always hope. There's always ways yes. to turn it around. And, you yes. know, I, I think that's really important that you share that. So thank you for sharing that you're, with us. You're very welcome. And I shared it because I want people to realize that there is always hope. What we're going through is only temporary. It's temporary reality. It looks like it might last forever. Nothing lasts forever. The sun always rises again. Mm -hmm. All the worst storms in history all ended at some point. So it is going to pass. The sun's going to come up we will be able to continue and we're continuing even right now focusing on the positive finding what to be grateful for taking positive action in the direction of what we want these are all keys to get us through every day mm -hmm. as well as our life yeah thank you joe so much for being on the show today you're such an inspiration and you've shared you. so much knowledge today and i think it's really going to help our viewers because you know everyone i always say that you know everyone needs a daily dose of inspiration you know, you have to keep refueling and keep inspiring yourself because that's really what makes life great is when you keep inspiring yourself and you keep evolving, right? And becoming a better person. And I think that the tools that you gave us today will definitely help our audience. So thank you so, so much for being on the show today. It's such an honor. And I want to ask you for our viewers that want to connect with you and buy, purchase your books, uh, where can they do so? Well, thank you. Thanks for the honor of being here. You're doing God's work. I really yeah. appreciate you. And I'm grateful and honored that I'm here. So uh, my books are on Amazon. The Miracle is on Amazon. Other books that I've written are all on Amazon. I'm not hiding. I'm all over the internet. <laughs> um, talking about posting videos and getting daily inspiration. I do it on Facebook and Instagram every single day. And I'm on both of them as Dr. Joe Vitale, D-R Joe Vitale, V-I-T-A-L-E. And so that's the easy thing to do. I do have a website, vitalilifemastery.com. Lots of programs, courses, freebies. So go to Vitality Life Mastery. There you go. Amazing. We're going to link all that information below so our thank viewers you. can connect with you. But thank you again for being on the show, and we hope to have you back soon. <laughs> Anytime you like. I'm ready. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook.